if you put in your homework and you go through the S&P 500, right? If you go through the healthcare space, the defense space, the oil space, the energy space, the agriculture space, you would realize that there is a massive bull market. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, obviously, the big story continues to be uh, the fluid situation going on in the Ukraine. As always, hearts and prayers and always good vibes uh, going out to the people uh, of Ukraine. And hopefully, uh, this will somehow go away soon, right? It, it's, it's a very, very tough, uh, tough way to kind of look at life. But there is obviously a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, another round of quote unquote talks. Uh, supposedly are going on this weekend. So we're definitely hoping uh, that this situation comes to uh, an end uh, with the least amount of casualties on um, as, as possible. Okay, at the end of the day, human life is very precious and we don't get um, a do-over. So hopefully uh, that goes uh, pretty, you know, pretty well soon, hopefully. All right, so let's talk about the market. So the, the cool thing about trading is it's, it's like Baskin Robbins, right? There's 31 flavors. There's, there's no such thing as the right way to trade, the right stocks to trade. Um, you know, it, it's all about your comfortability, right? So what I'm comfortable with might not be um, might not be a fit for you. What you're comfortable might you know, might not be a fit for me. And that's what's great about it. And it, with the first two three years, I've been saying this for years. Um, it, it's your it's your point to kind of figure out where you fit in. You know, are you an options trader? Are you a futures trader? Uh, do you like trading high beta technology names? Do you like trading? Um, do you like trading forex? You know what? You know NFTs, right? Uh, crypto. What, you know what is your thing, right? Nobody's gonna make fun of you, right? It's not about uh, the cool thing to trade. It's about the right thing to trade, the comfortable to trade, the want something that uh, that you can control and. In my early years, um, you know, especially from 2001 to 2003, uh, after the internet craze, after 9-11, uh, again, I, I, I didn't make a, a dime, literally, uh, from 2001 to 2003, and I kept on feeling sorry for myself, right? Um, I suck, I'm the worst, I have the dark cloud, uh, the market sucks. The market doesn't suck, guys. Remember, the market is the market, okay? Your process sucks. Your mental approach sucks. Your money management sucks. The market doesn't suck. The market's not there uh, to make you whole. It's not there to entitle you. It's not there to do anything. The market's just the market. Buyers, it's it's like you know, it's 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 a, a format, a coliseum of buyers and sellers, right? When buyers clean up sellers, stocks go higher. When sellers clean up buyers, uh, stocks go lower. So the idea that the market owes you anything is 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 absolutely ridiculous. And the one thing, at years and years and years went by. And lucky enough, I was able to uh, kind of figure things out, some things out. The one thing I, I started realizing that um, I kept on saying over and over, and I think a lot of people uh, feel exactly the same way when you're newer, when you're when you're uh, when you're younger in this business, uh, when you don't have enough screen time. We use the word "the market sucks," right? Everybody everybody's used that at one point uh, or another. Subconsciously, it comes out of our mouths very very freely and the one thing like i said you know, a couple of minutes ago market doesn't suck the market's there to digest information whether it's macro geopolitical uh financial and move in that direction fed obviously has a big big uh part of it uh as well but the one thing that i i, I figured out a long time ago is if you don't put in that work and it's, it's a very generic thing to say and a lot of people say it, but it's true if you don't put in the work and go through especially on the weekends go through countless charts and a lot of groups um you're not getting you know you're not getting a true dynamic of what's going on uh in the marketplace and you know using the word the market sucks is a crutch okay uh, it, it's an absolute crutch and it's not going to get you anywhere because if you use the word market sucks figure out why why does the market sucks well what kind of trader are you that the market is affecting you and when you go through charts and you put in the work you're going to realize that there is value somewhere okay 
I'm personally a technology trader, okay? I know there's a rabid bear market, okay, in technology, rabid bear market, okay? No matter what technology name you're in, you're probably underwater from where you were two, three months ago. Hell, maybe even two, three weeks ago. I know, for example, the banks are in a bear market, right? You got Citibank going down. You got JP Morgan getting destroyed, right? Bank of America is going down, right? That's a bear market, okay? And I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people are, you know, those specific traders of those sectors. Like I am, I love technology, sell site. I'm on the sell side bias pre predominantly the last two months because we're underneath the 200 day moving average. But you can't use the word market sucks because stocks are going down. Because apparently this is one of the very few instances that the market doesn't suck everywhere, okay? And if you did your research, if you put in your homework and you go through the S&P 500, right? If you go through the healthcare space, the defense space, the oil space, the energy space, the agriculture space, you would realize that there is a massive bull market there, okay? So using the word market sucks, which basically means you're not doing in the work, you're not putting in the work. So if you turn around and you look at the charts, you'll see oil is going out of its mind, right? Just because there's sanctions going on, right? Oil prices are absolutely going nuts. And you have tons of names that are breaking out, right? Look at XOM, look at, look at Chevron, right? Going, going absolutely nuts. Look at Neighbors. Look at, look at these stocks, right? Look at LNG, which I really, really like for uh, this week, right? Look at LNG. How can you turn around and say, quote unquote, the market sucks? You got healthcare names going nuts. Look at Humana, right? Humana is setting up really, really nice, okay? You got Anthem setting up AT, what was it? What's the symbol? A-N-T-M, I think. There you go. You have Anthem setting up really, really nice. You got McKissick setting up really, really nice. Look at the defense stocks, right? Because the war started, the defense names are popping. NOC going out of its mind. Look at Lockheed Martin going out of its mind. Look at General Dynamics going out of its mind. The agriculture, right? Because the oils are going on, the potash names are going up. They're going crazy, right? It just all depends what you want to, you know, what you're looking at. Mosaic, International Potash, even this little stock, Seed, is going absolutely nuts. So when you make a, a general statement that the market is su sucks, it's, it's, it's a crutch, it's a weak thing to do, and basically you're saying to yourself subconsciously, I'm not willing to put in the work to figure out where the strength is. Because if you are a permable, that's where the strength is, right? It's right in front of the charts. Everybody has access to exactly the same amount of charts and the same data that everybody else is. So if you're turning around, you're watching technology bleed and you're saying the market sucks, you're not saying the market sucks. You're saying you're, you are not ready to commit to this business. Again, this is not a part-time thing. You could be a part-time trader, but you gotta put in full-time effort. And, and this is a type of environment, this is the type of business that there's a lot of big money that's trading against you, okay? So if, you, if you're trading against big money, a lot of institutional money that's going against you, you have to be on the right side of institutional money. So where's the institutional money flow? The institutional money flow is where the charts and where the sectors I just talked about. So if you're sitting there and you're, and you're over this weekend continuing with that mentality and that personality spilling over into Monday's session, without putting in the work, well, how can you be upset about the results if you're, you're getting if you're not putting in the work to try to, to, try to rectify your results? It's, it's a losing personality, it's a losing trait, and the, only per, and the only thing that's stopping you from figuring things out is your ability to put your tushy in the seat and go through thousands and thousands of charts. Because if you do that, you'll have a completely different view of the market. The market doesn't suck. The sectors you're watching sucks. The, your approach sucks. Your process sucks. Your process is not working in a market that is very, very aggressive, fluid situations, and is dominated by headlines, whether it's the war headlines, whether it's the Fed headlines. So the best thing you can do is stop the complaining, right? Stop the belly aching, stop the self-pity, the woe is me, sit down, right? Sit down, start looking at charts, and you'll realize the market doesn't suck. It's the effort that needs to get better. So do yourself a favor. Again, guys, everybody has problems. Everybody has the same 24 hours of the day. Whatever you put in into those 24 hours, you're probably gonna get out uh, when all is said and done. So be better, right? All of us, myself, yourself, everybody included. Stop the complacency, complacency uh, stop the self-pity, get to work. So let's talk about the tape. 
Uh, very, very aggressive market. Again, Fed, war, up and down, up and down, up and down. The common denominator continues to be, especially in the technology sector, is sell bias, right? We see this every single day, no matter how strong the market gets, um, there's always supply to kind of end the narrative. And we saw that this week. The bulls had a great shot this week to reclaim the 20-day moving average. On Wednesday, they gapped up, not 20 cents, not 30 cents, not a dollar, they gapped up two and a half dollars above the daily supply. And if we would've just closed above this 20-day moving average that we talked about throughout the week, we would've had a really good grind all the way back to the next supply zone, but the bulls fumbled. And that's the bottom line. The bulls had an every opportunity uh, to live with prosperity, to build over the 20-day moving average, and they failed to do so pre-market turned around and yada 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 you look at the scoreboard towards the end of the week you see the nasdaq you know nasdaq down nearly three percent uh very very aggressive move down we'll talk about the pivots uh in a second but the most important part is what happens next and the one thing that we do know technically and that's all about right it's all about opinion is is technical confirmation so now we know we failed above the 20-day moving garage. The 350 uh, area we talked about constantly you know, throughout the week, that becomes the huge number now going forward. Over 350, we start going higher, but the problem is this is the first close below this whole range here. And now any move below Friday's lows of 335 starts the next cycle into this lower Bollinger Band at 330. And if that closes below 330, then we go all the way back down to the February 24 lows of 318, which will exaggerate things. Uh, obviously, technology investors are probably not gonna be happy. But again, like I said, for weeks and weeks and weeks, you, again, if you, if you are a long biased uh, investor, you don't need to sit there in a fetal position. Short some cues against your book, right? Get some hedges. Why are you sitting there and watching and sitting there and complaining and watching your portfolio bleed? If you're long Amazon, Facebook, Apple, um, you know, Netflix, short some cues, right? These are your longer term positions, short some cues against your positions until we start reclaiming bigger levels. Again, there's no reason to be a victim. It, again, it go, kind of goes back to the conversation we just had. Be productive, right? Be productive, protect yourself. Don't just sit there, bellyache, complain, and do nothing about it. These are all proactive steps that you can do as an investor to kind of protect your book until we start reclaiming the 200 day moving average, and then you can let go of your hedges. But why just sit there and bleed with your money? It just doesn't make any sense. Be an adult, be proactive, and stop complaining of things that you actually uh, can control. So that's kind of where we are uh, looking into uh, the week ahead as far as uh, the technical view. We, we, we kind of don't know uh, if these meetings, if, they, if they're actually even happening or not, if these meetings are going to uh, help or hurt uh, by the time uh, the futures open up uh, Sunday night, we don't know, right? We don't know, we just, we're just uh, sitting there and just digesting information like everybody else. But the point is we are prepared, right? That's the name of the game. We are prepared going into the next day. So when nobody's sitting there talking about this is a bull market, buy the dip, bears never learn. Bears been winning, guys. Bears been winning for a long, long time, and especially in the technology uh, in the banking space. Again, we gave plenty of examples. And if you go through uh, your charts this weekend, you'll probably see other uh, other sectors are in a massive bull market, but it's not technology, and that's where my prime uh, concentration is, and this is where uh, things are going forward. So uh, going into this week, again, let's see how the futures open up. Um, I'm obviously still sell bias. Again, I, this is very, very tough for me to be uh, buy bias, especially, you know, we got rejected off the 20. Again, you can see how many times we've gotten rejected off the 20. Um, until we at least reclaim the 20, how can you, you know, even talk about you know, holding inventory, and having exposure, uh, especially overnight. Intraday, of course, you can find some things, uh, intraday channels, on, especially on the 60 minute view. And that's kind of guys, uh, for all you guys, and, and again, we trade channels, right? If, if, you, if you've ever been uh, interested in pivots, and again, it's a very uh, different way of trading. It's not the normal, um, it's not something that uh, everybody does. I, I've, I've developed this uh, quite a while ago. And if you are interested in pivots, um, you know, listen, I, I think it's not for everybody. I've been saying that for years. Again, if you have a $500 account, $1,000 account, $2,000 account, $3,000, it's probably not for you, right? It's very, very tough to trade Amazon uh, with one share. But the point is, it's, it's a process, right? It's a process. It's not for Amazon. You could trade it with crypto. You could trade it with Forex. You could trade it with anything with liquidity, anything with liquidity in a range. 
Uh, my concentration is technology, but you don't need to. Uh, we have an offer until uh, tonight. If you are interested, it's a discounted offer for one uh, for one day. You know, listen, if you've been on the fence, check it out for 30 days. Uh, see if it's a good fit for you. If it's not, no big deal. We'll still be friends. But the point is there are other avenues that you could look at. Things a little bit different on this side. And the most important part is see if this is one of the flavors that you like, just like Baskin Robbins. It might not be, but hell, you never know. It might. So kind of check that out. Um, going into uh, this week, uh, there's definitely names I like. Um, there's definitely, definitely names that I like uh, on the short side. Uh, not too many on the long side as far as technology, although I just gave you guys uh, definitely a couple of examples. Uh, LNG, I really, really like uh, to the upside for all you guys who are trading energy. Uh, Humana looks really, really good as well coming out of this range. Uh, look at XOM, right? These are long, you know, long bias setups that if you are trading, you could definitely take advantage uh, to uh, the upside. I mean, downside pivots as well. Uh, there's a lot of them, right? There's definitely a lot of them. Let me give you guys a couple of names uh, that I do like uh, on that side of the market. What the hell do I like this week? Um, I think this AMC goes lower. Right, I think AMC probably goes lower. I know Batman came out, uh, broke this range here. Actually, you know what? Let's let's go over the pivots, and I'll show you exactly why uh, AMC and everything else that that I like. By the way, thanks for listening. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about the pivots from Friday. Um, so Rivian, Rivian has been an absolute monster. Uh, not all EVs are um, created the same. Obviously, there's Tesla and there's everything else. Uh, Rivian had a really great breakdown on Thursday. 53 held twice. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, that set it up into Friday session. Uh, I said perfect move to the January 50 lows. That held twice. If 50 confirms, you can see the next leg down. Here was Rivian. Right here was Rivian. Uh, so here is the 53 breakdown on Friday, right? Here's the 53 here, 53 here, and went down all the way to 50, which was right over here, the January uh, 28 lows. It broke the 50, it went right to 46, 47. Just an absolute great move uh, on Rivian uh, for Thursday going into Friday. Uh, NVIDIA got hit as well, 23130. If it builds below, it can flush. Here was NVIDIA. So if you've been watching this broadcast, they, they were coming uh, they were coming really aggressively. Uh, even last week, they were coming for the 230s, the 225s, uh, and the 220 uh, puts. And again, the, those uh, put buyers uh, definitely got paid out. Here's the 231 uh, 30s breakdown, traded all the way down to uh, 224. Again, NVIDIA takes out these lows. It's going to go lower as well. Um, Tesla, uh, Tesla, uh, not not a big move, not a big move at all. Uh, but you know, went down like six, seven points. Uh, eight thirty-two for bills below can flush to eight fourteen. Not a big move. I I, I was expecting a little bit more, uh, but the bulls kind of held up a little bit. So here is the eight thirty-two. Uh, right over here. Here's the 832, this whole channel here. And this is kind of what we talk about. We trade channels. Uh, 832 is the lowest candle into rising support. Uh, went down about seven and then kind of rebounded the rest of the day, just kind of going a little bit of sideways. But I'm telling you, if, uh, if you see this whole channel here, right, this whole sneaky channel here, this whole sneaky channel here, if it starts breaking down below this whole snack, the channel here, you could see uh, that 814 level, but we'll see. And we'll see what happens. Uh, NET got destroyed on Friday. Uh, 101 is yesterday's low and the pre-market low. Again, you want to kind of have multiple levels uh, that the kind of gauge that you, could, you trade off of. Uh, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, 91 is the next measure of potential. Didn't quite get to 91, but a nice move on uh, NET nevertheless. Uh, so here is the 101, it went all the way down uh, to 97. I still like this thing. This thing starts losing 97, uh, could get down to this 92, uh, 91 level. Excuse me, uh, Lucid, right? Uh, Lucid uh, 23, this is, this is, these are all fr uh, Thursday spilling into Friday's trade. Nice move on Lucid on Friday, uh, Thursday into Friday. Uh, 23, 20, 23, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, have to continue. Uh, have to continue to stay patient with this play against not Tesla. It's not gonna have a twelve dollar range. Uh, twenty two is now the pre market lows. Needs to confirm. I still like this thing. They're coming for the twenty one and twenty uh, puts. Uh, Amazon got absolutely destroyed Thursday and then confirmed Friday. Uh, twenty nine seventy five builds below and closes under. Can see a hundred points down. 
Uh, here's Friday, nice dump into the close, 29.35. You can see a 40 point dump on Thursday into Friday. Uh, next area that needs to establish a new ceiling, it can move down to 28.60. Look at Amazon, just got absolutely murdered. Congratulations to everybody. Uh, who took Amazon, got, when I said 28.60, it traded down to 28.76, but great move, just really, really great move uh, on Amazon there as well. So you got a perfect move, uh, just an absolute perfect move in Rivian. Uh, here comes Amazon, 28.83, went down to 28.76. Uh, AMC, again, a very emotional stock. Uh, as much as I say, and as much as somebody told me, hey, Dan, you don't trade it. You shouldn't really talk about it. Well, other people do trade it, and that's why we put in the channels. Again, thanks for listening. Uh, AMC, 1720, 17, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, buyers were coming in for uh, the 318, uh, $15 puts. Again, I don't know how good Batman is going to do. If it did well, who knows? But Technical analysis is still technical analysis just by the charts alone. 1720 uh, was the breakdown. Here's AMC, right? Here's AMC, took out the 1720 channel, uh, traded all the way down to 1635. If this thing confirms that 1620, $16 level, it should get down uh, to $15. Again, technical analysis is technical analysis. This thing loses 16, uh, it should get down to 15. Uh, so that's that. Uh, NET going down. Here comes NVIDIA. AMC 1650 on deck. Take on the way down. Uh, 825 is a big number. That's exactly where it stopped. Uh, Humana. Nice pop on Humana. I still think it goes higher. Uh, 41 uh, needs to build. Here is Humana, right? It closed, it closed right at the Bollinger Band here. This thing uh, starts reclaiming back 42. You could see a pretty big move uh, if these... Um, if these um, uh, healthcare names continue to move. So guys, that's it. it it's it, it's a pretty cut and dry business, okay? You're the only one responsible for your success or lack thereof, okay? Nobody's there pulling the strings. Everybody has the same charts, okay? Stocks go up, stocks go down. It's your job to stay safe and it's your job to capitalize. Okay guys, have a great weekend. God, peace, and love to everyone. Have a safe weekend, and with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care.